Welcome. Welcome to Today Focus. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. You need to stay tuned. Call somebody for this program today. We have a very special guest that has not been on the program in a long time, and I'm devoting the entire show with him today because he has so much to share, so much truth, so much teaching that he does as an associate pastor, motivational speaker, uh, and he's, I'm going to let you explain, let him explain to you how he actually defines his ministry. But we're, we're going to be talking with Bobby Petroselli today, and he is the author of two books that we are going to mention as well, and I believe he has more than that, but, but these are the two we're talking about today, called 10 Seconds Will Change Your Life Forever, and You Matter it doesn't, leaving your it behind. I love that. You want to stay tuned for that. And we all, at this time, uh, in, the, in our history as a nation right now, we need encouragement. And Bobby is here today to help us with that. And uh, Bobby, welcome to start with, to Bay Focus. Thank you for coming back on the program today. Great to have you. Absolutely, darling. Okay, love know, it. I want you to say um, um, the complete description of how you define your ministry, because there's a few other. I said you're, you're an associate pastor here locally in the Bay Area at the St. Pete Vineyard. Uh, you're a motivational speaker, travel the country, talking to youth, um, churches, um, or organizations, all kinds of things. But you have a way you describe your ministry. I love it. I like to tell people I'm first an educational speaker because yeah. I want to instruct, inform, educate. I don't want it to be something that I just motivate them for the moment. I want it to be a life changing thing. And one of the greatest things in that, Darlene, is there schools I go to today that literally they heard me speak 20, 25, 20, 18, 17 years ago, and students that were students then now bring me back to different schools that they're at because they are now teachers and educators. So I love it. I want to yeah. educate, inspire, motivate, instruct, direct, however the spirit leads me in every opportunity. Well, you know, your, your ministry um, is called, if you go to the website and we have it on the screen when we, when we show you throughout the, the program, your name, 10 seconds org, but that 10 seconds, we, for the, our viewers that they're meeting you for the first time today, that 10 seconds has significance. Tell us the story. Well, when I went through a tragedy over 30 years ago, I was asleep in bed and a drunk driver crashed through my house, killed my wife, seriously injured me. It's a miracle I lived. Well, one of the biggest things during the time of coming through it, Darlene, is people would say to me all the time, they would use a phrase that we all hear. And the phrase was, you got to take this one day at a time. And I would look at them and say, are you crazy? I can't get through this moment. How am I going to get through the whole day? Yeah. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I can't even get to 10.05. I feel so overwhelmed. And then all of a sudden, I started to embrace. I feel the spirit gave me the wisdom and the insight to embrace this tragedy one moment at a time. Wow. And that's one of the biggest things I share with people to listen. You won't get through the day without getting through the moment. If I could get through moment by moment by moment, and here's what I break it down to. 10 seconds. A moment is 10 seconds or less. If I can make it through 10 seconds and understand that 10 seconds in every moment has the power to empower, to direct, to lead, to guide, even in a negative way sometimes if I allow it, but things happen in this world not one day at a time, one moment at a time, and every moment has the power to direct, redirect the life of every single one of us. Well, all right, and I want to say this because at the point that we are recording the show, we're going to, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more at the end of the show, but at the point that we're recording this so that people, if they see it in the future, uh, everyone is managing uh, a crisis w with the coronavirus, COVID-19, and everybody's trying to come up with ways to manage those 10 seconds. How did you do it? I, for me, it was doing everything from being still, finding those still moments, to enjoying something I like to eat, to watching a comedy on TV, to listening to a powerful message moment by moment. Not that I even have to listen to the whole 30 minutes or 15 minutes. Maybe I listened to a minute or two and broke it down moment by moment. But once I realized I can get through this moment, then all of a sudden it's wow, like just since you and I've been talking, yeah. how many moments have we gotten through? through to get to the next moment. And I always share this with people. We don't have the past, it's done. We don't have the future yet, it's not here. All we have is this present moment. And one of the biggest things I share all the time is don't let the pain of the past or the fear of the future 
to stop you from being present in the present. This is all I have. And so many times what I'll share with people is I've learned myself. If I get anxious, filled with worry, fear, depression, I start letting that take over. We've all been there. Then all of a sudden I start asking myself, is this making the circumstance or the situation better that I'm filled with anger, fear, impatience, anxiety, worry? And all of a sudden I come to the realization, no, it's not making it any better. What could I do to get away from that? And I tell people, find whatever it can be done in your life at that moment that's healthy, that won't hurt you or somebody else to help you get from moment to moment to moment. And here's what I say. You'll have 10 seconds. Before you know it, you have 30 seconds. Before you know it, you have a minute. You have five minutes. You have 10 minutes, a half an hour, an hour, hours. And before you know it, you get to that next part or towards even the end of the day and you've made it through that moment when, by moment. You know, Bobby, from your own personal um, experience, at what point, because you went through this, this horrific tragedy of, of lose, losing your wife, your world fell apart. You, I think you had been a, a coach. I was a teacher and a coach a at the time. A teacher and a coach, happened. Absolutely. you know, and at what point did you say that you worked through this to the point that I've got to share. Then you went into you went into this ministry, this this motivational. How how did you make that switch to feel like, wow, I can share with others what I've been through? And when did that happen? How long did it take you to progress from going through the grief and everything to really saying, I'm going to move forward? The first time I spoke, this happened in Texas. The first time I actually spoke before an audience was less than a year later at the church wow. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. My pastor asked me, did I feel comfortable? And I did. I got up and shared. I was back home visiting family. I then spoke for the first time to a school because I had moved back to New York from Texas to be around family, to kind of get away from the atmosphere of where this took place. And the school I was working at did a lot of work with students against drunk driving at that time. And they asked me when they found out my story, would you share? Well, it was literally one year to the day of the tragedy I went through that I shared this. But I look at all the stepping stones even from that. And I started full-time, part-time in 1991. Mm -hmm. And then in 1993, I stepped into this full-time. And I cannot tell you how many times, Darlene, I thought, I share so many other things in my program. How many more times am I going to share this story? And it blows me away that when I get done with programs, when I have those conversations with God, God, really? How many more times am I going to share this? And I get bombarded at the end of those programs more than ever where people come up and say, don't ever stop sharing yeah. your story. It yeah. really spoke to me. It touched me. Yeah. It encouraged me in the middle of what I'm going through. And here's what I learned, that there's patterns, habits, and routines that lead to success there's patterns, habits, and routines that lead to failure. What I started to investigate is while I was going through the tragedy, Darlene, and still today in my life, if I have a goal or a dream to accomplish, I want to find people that have gone before me and what do they do yeah. to achieve yeah. that and get to that place? Yeah. Because there's certain things they know and they're doing that I may not know and I may not be doing. So how could I put that into practice? And that's what I started to learn other people who had gone through tragedies, who'd gone through adversity, how do they make it through that? And then I started to follow their protocol by dealing with a greater faith, of course, which I had, but also believing in myself that I have the ability to get through this. Yeah. Number two, that I knew I had to forgive and let go of the past, not to condone wrong. I had learned that in the very first night I'm laying in my bed, I'm praying, Lord, I need to forgive this man. You're the only one who can help me to do that. And last but not least, rely on all of those that wanted to support me and help me in the smallest or the biggest ways. How could they encourage me to move forward? Yeah, oh, and, and I just, I want to encourage too. And we're, throughout the, the program, we're going to put up on the screen at different times that, you know, his books. But that, that whole story, Tense, is in this book. Ten seconds will change your life forever. Uh, it's, it's powerful. It's been a number of years. We actually did an interview on this book. Uh, and it's been on, on, on other programs here, too, here at CTN that have had it on. But, but it never, it never um, loses significance and timeliness. Boy, ev if ever now you realize every minute, every moment, every, every way we go through life. But there's another, this, uh, this title intrigues me and we want to spend some time on this uh, today. His book is called You Matter, It Doesn't, Leaving Your It Behind. What does that mean? Well, 
just like my story, every single person. Here's what God showed me as clear as day in his word. I ask people all the time, Darlene, I said, what is the gospel of Jesus Christ? People right away say Jesus died for my sins. Yes, totally. But that's not the whole gospel. He also died to heal my broken heart. He died to give me a sound mind and bring healing to my body. But I want to focus on the broken heart for just a moment. I am a firm believer that every person in this world, everybody watching, every person that is breathing and has a pulse has been broken somewhere in life. Most of the time, the first time we get broken is in our childhood some way. And I believe that's the enemy's greatest goal is to bring brokenness to us. Well, here's the reality. The more I study and look at my own life and the lives of others, more often than not, that brokenness becomes a dysfunction that chases after us to define us. So let me show you this quick, simple example. You see this bag? This bag to me represents our hurt, our pain, and our brokenness. That's what this bag represents. The cell phone, which is a smartphone, and I don't know why I have it. I'm not very smart, darling. <laughs> it makes you smarter. But it makes yeah. me smarter. <laughs> yeah. But I have a cell phone. The cell phone represents us, and I'm picking on us. If I take this cell phone, Darlene, and I put it in the bag, is it still a cell phone in the bag? Of course. But here's the kicker. Is it being used for the purpose that it was manufactured and created to be used for when it's in the bag? Absolutely not. So what God's put on my heart is everybody in my audience has been hurt, wounded, and broken somewhere in life. More often than not, they're allowing that wound and that brokenness to cover them up, to carry them, to hide them from who they've been put on this earth to be. That was Satan's greatest goal with Adam and Eve. What's the first thing they did? They went and hid and covered up. And it's because of the fact that they believe whatever lies Satan was feeding to them. Well, my goal is to this, take people out of the bag, back to the place of who they've been and what true being born again is pulling away from what has happened and allowing God to work in your life. And I mentioned to you earlier about what's called a bummer sheep. It's one of the greatest stories I heard. Around the world, there's still shepherds with flocks in the field. Well, every once in a while, a baby lamb is born that is pushed away by its mother sheep. The shepherd keeps on taking that baby lamb, trying to give it back to the mother. The mother pushes it away. He keeps on trying. Finally, he realizes the mother won't take it back. Takes the baby lamb brings it into his house, begins to raise it himself, brings healing to it. And I like to use the expression, helps it to become born again. Now, when the shepherd takes the baby lamb, brings it back, finally, the mother receives it. Here's the kicker. Here's the best part of this whole story. Every time the shepherd walks out to the pen, and calls for the sheep, whether to put oil on their head, whether to feed them or to take them out into the fields, the very first sheep that run to the shepherd are the bummer sheep because they recognize the voice of the one who healed them, restored them, and helped them to become born again. To me, Jesus is the great shepherd. And the reality is he wants to heal everybody wherever they've been broken, wherever they've been wounded, wherever they've been hurt in life. He wants to get to their root issue, their heart issue. That's why the word says, out of the heart flows the issues of life. And the word heart is used in the Bible 836 times. So my goal is to help bring healing to the broken of this world. And I believe that's the first step to see revival even come, bringing healing and bringing the healer to the broken of this well, world. Well, and, and another thing, um, you know, when you talk about the brokenness and, and how you have to, to leave it behind, you know, just it's part of it, leaving it behind. But it takes supernatural power to do that. If there's any anything I've ever seen in life is the minute you try to do this on your own Absolutely. with your own ability, it's impossible. And you talk about how the power of the Holy Spirit is well, needed. Well, here's the deal. I hear the most amazing sermons and I'm not here to question or judge anybody. So many times we preach messages like people already got it. Well, yeah, here's the key. Good. We don't already have it sometimes in our thinking. Here's the difference between us and the Old Testament. The Old Testament is a great teacher, but here's the reality. People of the Old Testament did not have the Holy Spirit living in them. We have the Holy Spirit yeah, in us. Yeah. So here's a simplicity that I keep on learning. I got to access, activate, and manifest what I already have. God gave me this simple word, Darlene. I don't go to a gym to find a muscle. I go to the gym to develop a muscle. I already have it. I already have the greatest power in the universe that raised Christ from the dead living in me. How do I learn to be still and know that he's the Lord? How do I learn to 
as a bummer sheep know that my sheep know my voice? How do I learn to be led by the spirit? How do I know to sow in the spirit? And I keep on coming back to this. And the proof that God brought me back to was the night that my wife Ava was killed. I'm laying in bed in the hospital room three hours after I was notified she's dead. I'm crying, I'm praying, and people are gathering around me. And here was the simplicity of my prayer that God brings me back to all the time, darling. I said, Father, you are alive in me. And I said, your word teaches me I got to forgive this man. There is no way on this earth, apart from your Holy Spirit empowering me to forgive him, can I forgive him? There's no way I could do it. And I could honestly say, God heard that prayer, moved on that part, and there was frustration and there was anger, but the anger was up here and I didn't allow the anger to get into my heart. Yeah. But the reality was the Holy Spirit is the one who helps me. And my simple prayers every day is this, Father, here's my heart. I want you to baptize my heart in your blood once again, because your blood was shed for my emotional, solical heart to bring healing, to guide, to lead and direct through your Holy Spirit in all that I need to do. And I know one thing, apart from him, I can do nothing. Apart from his Holy Spirit, I can do nothing. But with his Holy Spirit, I have the power to do everything he's called me to be, do, how to live, how to overcome and how to move. Apart from him, I can't. With him, I can. Yeah, no, that is just, that's huge. That's huge. It's literally, I mean, I, I've heard this. Um, not only did you just articulate this so beautifully on the super, but on the supernatural side, it's, it's literally a supernatural thing. Absolutely. I mean, people, I've heard stories, we've had some of them shared here on Bay Focus, how people have walked in forgiveness, walked in this um, forgiveness from brokenness to get past the brokenness so they can move forward. And they just felt they could never have done it on their own. That it literally was, a, 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 they could, could sense and feel God's presence Absolutely. in doing this. It wasn't just Holy Spirit, I need you. It was, they, they, they knew he was there. Totally. Holy Spirit was right there totally. in the room, totally. right there with them, a supernatural moment. Another thing you talk about, um, and boy, this is needed now, is unity. What, what do you feel about well, that? Well, here's the reality. When Jesus was saying a simple prayer to the Father, he goes, Father, may my body be one as you and I are one. I do so much work with athletes all over America. I do pro sports, college sports, high school sports all the time. Here's a simple analogy, and I know you'll yeah, embrace this. Yeah. I said, if you take every athlete on that team, whether it's a team of all males or all females, every one of those athletes have different names, have different likes, have different interests, have different ethnicities, come from different backgrounds, have different boyfriends or girlfriends or people they're dating or food interests. Everything is different, but here's the key. They're all part of the same team. Yeah. The reality yeah. is this, as believers, yeah. the key is this, we don't all have to agree on everything. Some people believe in raising their hands, others don't. Some believe in the power of the Holy Spirit where there's the baptism and speaking yeah. in tongues and other giftings, others don't. Yeah. But guess what? We don't have to come in agreement with everything. The That's key right. is we are on the same team. And That's here's right. the simple analogy I teach. When you look at the Tower of Babel in the Old Testament, Satan knew the power of unity even for the wrong reasons. Because he literally had got them to start building the tower all the way to heaven. And God even said, nothing's impossible when man comes together. So what did he have to do? He had to change the languages because he knew that they could literally reach heaven. Well, here's the point. I'm not giving him any credit, but Satan ain't no dope. He realizes if the body of Christ works together, then, then we will stop his kingdom, stop the work of what he's trying to do. So he wants to keep division. I always share this. You never see a homeless person, and I don't mean this disrespectful, get held up at gunpoint by a thief because in the mind of a thief, a homeless person has nothing of material value that they may want. Well, guess what? Satan only goes with his value and he knows yeah. the power of yeah. unity, what it will do to his kingdom. And I'm a firm believer as we heal the brokenhearted, as we allow the Holy Spirit to really help lead, guide, direct and empower us. And as we come together as his body, we will see a stop of the enemy's kingdom on this earth and we will help bring the healing, deliverance and restoration that this world is in desperate need Whoa. of. I feel anointing on that, Bobby. Amen. That is, I'm serious. That, that is a powerful, powerful statement. And now more than ever, I, you know, if there's one thing, and again, I've chosen today in this show to address our current situation as well. What we're seeing is churches at the point that this show has been recorded and, and churches have, are online 
now. They can't meet in their facilities. Um, we are coming up with ways, thank God for technology to unite. But we have a huge enemy right now uh, that has invaded our earth, our world, and our nation in terms of this silent, this silent enemy, this disease. And now is when the church, it's been, we're proving to start with, I, I can speak firsthand on the numbers of people that are tuning in online on many of our churches is astronomical. Absolutely. It is huge. People are finding churches online and needing this encouragement. Now is the time I want you to speak to this. That a unified church can rout the enemy. I want you to speak to that. Well, the reality is that simple. The power of two. The word says where two or three of you are gathered, there am I in the presence. Well, guess what? We have millions that are coming together and yeah. gathering to yeah. stop the move of the enemy. And people are so desperate for love. This world, you know, our biggest fear, let me make this clear. Our biggest fear is the fear of not being loved, of being rejected, of not being included. I shared with you earlier, even when I walked downtown St. Pete, I bumped by people or I don't mean physically bump, but I'm going past them. And the first thing I turn to them and say, I just want to let you know, I am praying for you. And they're yeah. like, thank yeah. you so much. I needed that. Yeah. Just simple things, simple things of showing them that they're important, that they're valuable, that they matter. As my whole program says, you matter. When Jesus hung on the cross, I like to take John 3, 16, and here's what I want to shout out to the church and to the world. When Jesus hung on the cross, the reason he hung on the cross is simple. He wanted his creation to know how much they matter to God. Yes. They matter so much that he's willing to lay down his life on their behalf to reunite, to restore, to bring them the connection to the Father that God created it to be. And the reality is yeah. that simple. Jesus would not die for a piece of junk. There is nobody out there in God's eyes that is a piece of junk. Right. We may do some things because we allow brokenness and sin to get in the way, but it doesn't change his love and adoration for us. And the simplicity that I have for everybody watching is God loves you. You matter to God. You are his son, his daughter, his creation. You are valued. You are adored. And he adores you and wants to be with you through every moment, no matter what you are facing, including the whole corona situation. He wants to be at the center of all things. I simply encourage you this simple word. Be still. Find those moments to hear his voice, to sense his presence, to do whatever it takes in a positive way to sense that he's leading, guiding, and directing in all truth, righteousness, and understanding, and victory is ours in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That was a prayer. Amen. Right there. Amen. Right there. Absolutely. I was going to say, Amen. I was just going to say, Bobby, do a quick prayer for us. We're almost out of time to talk. You just did it. How can our viewers connect with you and if they want to bring you in when everything is normal again and <clears throat> we can all gather together and you because you share so much everywhere tell our viewers again where you go to speak how's best to connect with you who you're trying to reach I'm all over social media because mm -hmm. of when I went through the tragedy the kids at the high school rallied around me so much they kept on showing me coach you matter yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't have to define you. Let's leave that it behind. We understand you're mourning, but you can go forward. So literally, in 27 years as a full-time speaker, I've spoken more than 6,000 times. Out of those 6,000 times, 5,500 programs have been to high schools, middle schools, colleges, and educational groups. Okay. That's my heart more than ever. And of yeah. course, churches, corporations, businesses, a yeah. little of everything. Okay. All right. That's great. We'll leave it at that. We're, gonna, we're going to take a break here uh, and, and come back and close out the show. But uh, I want to encourage you. You're going to see on the screen again the, the books, uh, Bobby's books and his website. And so where, where you can contact him. And like you said, he's all over social media as well. Uh, and then we'll be right back to close out.
Your next text could save a life. Help CTN bring hope to the hurting, feed the hungry, and reach the lost. You can make a difference today. Text CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. That's CTN HOPE to 206-859-9405. Did you know CTN has a Roku channel? That's right, you can now stream CTN content directly to your television without the need for cable or satellite. Simply add our channel to your Roku lineup and you're ready to go. We're streaming 24 hours a day to bring you the quality Christian programming you've come to expect from CTN. Look for CTN on Roku today. Hello, my name is Darlene Greenlee, and I want to invite you to join us each week on Bay Focus. We are going to highlight local ministries, community organizations, events, concerts. Reporter Brooke Rathmel goes behind the scenes to get the interviews you want to see. I hope you will join me each week on Bay Focus. you've enjoyed today's program. What a privilege it has been to have Bobby Petroselli with us. I hope that you'll check him out and and go to his website and get his books and book him to come speak at your church, at your event, at your school, when everything is open to do this again. And we believe it will. We believe God is on the throne. I want to encourage you to contact CTN at this time. Uh, You need prayer. You need anything, encouragement as well from us to contact us and contact Bay Focus through social media in particular. We we have a Facebook page. You can reach us through the website. You can watch our shows uh, on YouTube. We want to connect with you. Thank you so much for supporting us. We will see you next week on Bay Focus. May God richly, richly bless you.